Hi everyone. So now let's introduce another concept over here, the concept of over under absorption of overheads. Now the first thing we need to understand is, and this is a frequently asked question, why do we use estimated figures? So they, they often ask you that why estimated figures are used while calculating the overhead absorption rate. Now estimated figures are used because firstly firms have to calculate the price of a product at the start of the period. So imagine you're starting out with a new, with a new product and on day one before you go out to sell that product you need to determine the price of that product. And at that time actual data would not be available. So you would not know what will be the electricity bill for that entire year which you're about to start. You would not know how much salaries would you have to pay, would you have to hire another worker, how much would be your maintenance cost. So your overheads, these will not be available at the start of the year. So again, you will not have your actual data, hence you would have to rely on budgeted overheads and budgeted activity. Right. So when we talk about total cost, remember total cost is broken down into direct cost, which are costs that can be traced directly on a per unit basis and your overheads. Now overheads again are those that have to be estimated. You have to estimate what will be your budgeted electricity bill for the year, maintenance cost for the year. And then you would also have to estimate your budgeted activity. How many machine hours will be used? How many labor hours will be used so that you can calculate your overhead absorption rate? Now, what happens with, with firms is that since you're using budgeted data and when your period ends, the actual data will be available. Hence, firms can compare their budgeted overheads or, or their budgeted data with actual data. And this results in over and under absorption of overheads. So we can have two cases over here. We can have a case where overheads were underabsorbed. What does underabsorb mean? Underabsorb means that it was a loss to the firm. And when you see the word overabsorption, that would mean it was a profit to the firm. Now, why would firms make a loss or the profit? We can have different scenarios. So let's start off with this scenario. Now, Remember these overheads have to be recovered. How do you recover them? So the firm will calculate the overhead absorption rate, which is how much it should charge overhead for every single unit that it produces, right? And now these overheads have to be recovered. So when you sell that product, you are essentially recovering a portion for overheads from the customer. Now, what will happen when there is an underabsorption? So firstly, you could have a scenario where the firm produces fewer units than it had actually predicted. So if the actual level of activity is less than the budgeted level of activity, that would mean that the firm made fewer units, which resulted in fewer machine hours, fewer labor hours. And if you made fewer units, you would not be able to recover the entire amount that you had estimated you will recover for your overheads. In that case, it would be a loss to the firm since the firm would have not recovered its overheads. You can also have this case that the firm made as many units as it estimated, but the actual spending on overheads was higher. So for example, if you estimated your maintenance cost to be 15,000, but actually your maintenance cost ended up being 20,000, it means your maintenance cost was 5,000 higher and that would be a loss to the firm. Right? So the firm did not recover the entire amount and that reduces the profit that the firm actually made. So under absorption is a case where the firm either made fewer units or used fewer activity or the overheads were higher than what was estimated and that would be a loss to the firm. So it would reduce the profit that the firm had expected it would make. What about overabsorption? So overabsorption is a case where number one, the firm made more units that it had estimated. So the actual level of activity is greater than the budgeted activity. So in this case, the firm made more units, which means that it recovered more for the overheads than it had expected, which is a profit to the firm because you have exceeded the amount that you were supposed to recover for overheads and that excess amount becomes your profit. Or you could also be in a situation where you made as many units as you, as, as you had expected, but the 
actual overhead turned out to be less than you had estimated. So now in this case, you had estimated your maintenance cost to be 10,000, but actually your maintenance cost was 8,000. So your actual maintenance cost was lower than what you had estimated. So again, that 2000 extra that you have recovered from your customer adds to your profit. All right. So it's important that you should be able to identify when firms are under absorbing overheads, which means that they're recovering less. That's a loss or over absorbing their overheads, which means that they're recovering more and it becomes a profit for the firm. Right now, let's apply this concept to this example question. Right. So now if we have this data along with budgeted overheads, so let's say the machining department had set out the overhead absorption rate at $1.36 per machine hour. And the finishing department had set out the budgeted overhead absorption rate at 1.32 per labor hour. Now remember they calculated this using budgeted overheads and budgeted activity at the start of the period. And now you have your actual results. So for machining, the actual overheads were 82,436 this much labor hours and this much machine hours were you were used. Now what we know is in the machining department, what is relevant is the machine hour because we can see the overhead absorption rate was calculated on, on the machine hours. Whereas for the finishing department, labor hours were used. So this is the actual activity used in this department. Now based on this data, we need to determine whether each department overabsorbed or underabsorbed their overheads. Now, how do we do that? So let's learn this calculation. So if I start off with the machining department, what I know is for the machining department, the budgeted OAR is 1.36 per machine hour, which means that for every machine hour used, the product will be charged 1.36 in the machining department. Now the data shows that actually 56,000 120 machine hours were used, which means that the firm recovered $76,323 as overheads. Why is that? Because they used 56 120 machine hours and they recovered 1.36 per hour. So the amount that they recovered was 76,323. That's the money that they've recovered from the customers. And the data shows the actual overheads that were incurred by the machining department was 82,436. So this is the amount that they recovered. That's the actual overhead incurred. So you recovered less than your actual overheads. So that's a loss for the firm. So this loss amounts to 6113. So we will call this 6113 under absorbed. So in this case, the firm underabsorbed its overheads, which resulted in a loss worth 6113, right? Now let's apply the same logic to the finishing department, right? So again, let me, let me put the data in, in front of you so that we can calculate it. Now, what we know is the budgeted OAR in the finishing department is 1.32 per labor hour. Remember, we're doing it for the finishing department. The applied overheads is 1.32 into 41,295. So I just illustrated that the actual labor hours used is 41,295. So the firm recovered 54,509 from its customers. But again, as you guys can see, the actual overhead, right, is 56,980. So the firm recovered 54,509. The actual overhead incurred was 56,980. So the firm made a loss over here. That loss amounts to which means that 2471 was underabsorbed. That's again a loss for the firm. So whenever you need to figure out over underabsorbed, the first step is you need to calculate the budgeted overhead absorption rate. Once you have that, you need to find applied overheads. The overheads recovered where you multiply it by the actual activity that was used by the firm. This will give you applied overheads. Then you compare applied with actual. So in this case, applied was less actual was greater that's a loss but if you have a case where applied overheads are greater and actual overheads are less then that would be over absorbed and it would be a profit for the firm 